Thank you. A colleague, on behalf of the National Graves Association, I'd like to thank you all very much for your attendance here today. The National Graves Association recognises the right of all groups to commemorate the dead in a fitting manner. However, in so doing, we fiercely defend our right and the rights of other groups to commemorate Ireland's patriot dead. Furthermore, it is our belief that those who sacrifice so much, so many who sacrifice so much in the pursuit of Irish freedom should always hold pride of place when we remember the past. That certainly has always been the policy of the National Graves Association and it will continue always to be our policy. Now, before we leave here today, there are a few people I must give gratitude to, and in no particular order. I'd like to thank very much Williams and Ross and Cole, who've come so far to participate in today's event and who have been so supportive. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the extended O'Donovan Ross family, many of whom gave their blessing for this event today, and who also have helped the National Graves Association with other projects. I'd like to thank the Glass Nevin Trust, the administrators of this graveyard, for their cooperation and their assistance in various events that the National Graves Association have organized in this venue. And particularly, I'd like to thank John Green and George McCullough, the chairman and CEO of the Trust, for their assistance in this project over the past 18 months or so. I'd also like to thank Frank Lunny, Patrick Lennon, Donica Omohuna, John, John Lamb, and everybody else who has contributed towards today's event. I'd also like to thank our flag holders, and flag bearers, and others. I'd like to thank Sir Wall, who donated the uniform used by Paddy today, and also yeah, Gary Buckley for uh, Josh Buckley, sorry for at such short notice, organising the platform podium here tonight. I must thank Robbie McGowan and Alan Donnelly of the Glass, ne uh, Glass Nevin Monumental Works for their assistance both with this event today and with many other projects of the National Graves Association. James McGowan from McGowan Stone supplied the granite, that, or sorry, the limestone that's used in this memorial. One person was the main driving force behind today's events. Aidan Lambert is himself an artist of considerable ability. He not only designed this memorial and did, executed the artwork on it, he also worked tirelessly to see the whole project through from start to finish and we are all deeply grateful to Aidan for his efforts today. Many other members and supporters of the National Graves Association, both at home and abroad, have contributed towards today's events. And I must mention Dennis O'Sullivan and Noel O'Driscoll from County Cork, who were very generous in their support financially to make today's event possible. And the one other person that I can't leave here without mentioning is our own tireless worker, our secretary, Matt Doyle, who has worked at any given time is working on at least six projects. I'll shortly call on upon there our flag bearers, or sorry, uh, our piper played the national anthem. I must mention before we go, we have an extra flag here today. John Gaffney is carrying one of the flags used by the Fenians. It's uh, very significant. It shows the influence of the Fenians in America because uh, when it's unfurled, you'll see that it has four bars representing the four provinces and it has 32 stars representing the 32 counties. It, it's significant for us to have John carry this flag as John's uncle of the same name, John Gaffney, was one of the first volunteers to be executed during the Civil War. On the 17th of November, 1922, John Gaffney was executed along with Peter Cassidy, Richard Toohey, and James Fisher. 
as I say, on the 17th of November 1922, and all four are buried right behind us here in the Republican plot. I now call upon you all to face the national flag as our piper plays our on the